This is the New York Sports Machine on WICR. All right, Mike Demergis along with the great Anthony Carlo here in New York. And some big moves by the New York Jets over the last week. Anthony, if you would have told me that the Jets would have Brandon Marshall, Darrell Revis would be back, and Ryan Fitzpatrick, and more moves to come, I would have said you belong in the movie The One Who Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I can't believe the moves the Jets have made over the past week. Unbelievable. You know what? It's 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 to be expected. They bring in a whole new crew. Mike McCagnin comes in, and if I'm a Jets fan, I'm absolutely ecstatic right now. I want to see a team of franchise and leadership in McCagnin and the crew that was brought in that is going to bring a winning product onto the field. So I'm ecstatic right now. They go out. They get Darrell Rivas back. They go out. Brandon Marshall, listen to me. That is a huge pickup. They needed that number one receiver. And Marshall, okay, he's not the number one receiver in the NFL, but he's easily in the top five to seven, and he'll be the number one for the Jets. So I, I am just, I, you know, moving forward, I really see big things for this team going into this year. Well, let's talk about Brandon Marshall. First off, five 100-yard reception seasons, seven seasons of 80 or more. Last year he dropped down to just over 60 receptions. Bad year for Jay Cutler, bad year for the Bears. Question was, okay, you bring him in, who's going to get him the ball because you still have the problem? We've got Geno Smith. We know what a disaster he is. We know he's not the leader of the team. We know he can't keep meetings. We know he's a turnover machine. Oh, by the way, let's pick up Ryan Fitzpatrick. Now, people say, ah, Fitzpatrick, okay. Look, up in Buffalo, he had three straight years where he threw over 20, rece- 20 touchdown passes, and he's a lot better than the turnover machine that is Geno Smith. So I'm very optimistic. All of a sudden, yeah, Fitzpatrick, a better quarterback. Eric Decker could be the number two guy, number two, and Brandon Marshall's the number one guy, and they're only tied into him for one year. And, oh, by the way, we haven't talked about Terrell Rivas yet. Right, and you're, you're very optimistic about Ryan Fitzpatrick. I understand. The way I look at him is he's a journeyman. He's been around the Bills. You know, He's been with a bunch of different teams. He'll get the job done. He'll game manage. That's the way I look at it. He's not going to tear up the league, but he'll do probably a better job controlling the game than Geno did. I'm still not 100% on board with going Ryan Fitzpatrick as your day one starter. As bad as Geno was last year, I and, told you, and no, he no, was no, bad. No. Listen, if the Jets don't get Mario in a draft or another quarterback in a draft or don't make another deal, You've got to go with Fitzpatrick. Right. But that's there's the there's thing. no question. But that's the thing. I'm not Xing out getting someone in the draft. I'm I'm hoping maybe, even though they made this move, it, it might make people think it's unlikely, but I'm hoping they make an effort. If they have a shot at Mariota, obviously I ho- I hope they do have a shot and I hope he can be the guy for this team because that would just turn it, it it would put it over the hump right now. Well, the great thing about being bad all these years and being bad without a quarterback, you know what? You've got spending room under the cap because a quarterback eat, eats up a majority of your cap if you have a great quarterback, uh, you know, just ask the, the Colts, just ask the Denver Broncos, and just ask the New England Patriots. So if Mariota is there, the Jets have to take him. This is a no-brain, this is a no-brainer. They've got to make a move at Mariota if he is there. Question is, Chip Kelly, you know he's pushing to try and move up to the Jets spot right now and get Mariota, if, if not higher. So there could be deals in the way. If you're the Jets, if you can get more draft picks, um, you know, what do you do here? I say you stand pat. You made the moves you had to make. You look good on offense. You improved a quarterback still. You improved on offensive line as well, picking up Carpenter uh, from Seattle. Get the quarterback now. He, he, here's the part, and, mm-hmm. and, I'll, and I'll let you talk in a second. Yep. I've been building up for this for a <laughs> while. The Jets really – and, and, and this is what I think a lot of fans miss. They're playing for one of two playoff spots. You're not going to win the division until Tom Brady's out in New England. So the Jets, whatever they're doing, they're not winning the division no matter what. You're playing for one of two playoff spots. And that's kind of discouraging if you're a Jet fan. Well, you know what, but it's 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 sort of accepted. Like you said, you, you know Tom Brady's up there in, in, in New England. You know that the New England Patriots are going to win the division. 
if they can play, you know, for a wild card, I mean, listen, that's better than what they've been doing. Well, which, which, to... which is heartening, though. You could be 11-5 and five and you're still getting a wild card. You're not going to win the division. That's what's just heartening it's about true. it. It's it, true. It's not the, you know, the NFC South. Right. Or what the NFC was, was a few years back when Seattle won the division at 7-9. and nine. Right. Well, you mentioned Chip Kelly, and obviously the Eagles making a lot of moves. He actually said that, and I don't know if this is part of his whole plan to deceive everyone, they're not going after Mariota. Yeah, come on, you know, really? S- Sam Bradford comes over in the trade with Nick Foles, and, and uh, they, they're they thinking maybe that's a little decoy. You yeah, know, and Hillary wh- Clinton's not running, <laughs> not running for president of the United States in 2016. Sure. Can you believe, though, the way the Eagles broke, not to get off topic, but the way they broke down the team? I mean, uh, uh, getting rid of everyone? Well, it, it's unbelievable, and, it, and it's making so much headway that Sal Palantonio, the ESPN uh, NFL reporter, was at a Yankees spring, tra- tra- spring training game, and he's watching the Yan- Yankee prospects, and Yankees GM Brian Cashman said, hey, what's going on in Philly with Chip Kelly? That's, <laughs> that's how much news it's making. Yeah. So, well, is he a genius or is he a mad scientist? That will be you know, determined as things unfold. I For think sure. he's a little bit nuts, to be honest with you. You know what? I think he is a mastermind. I'll tell you one thing in this game. I think that he has a very, very scientific way about going about things, and it, everything seems unorthodox right now. But getting back to the Jets, I mean, Darrell Reeves coming back. you got to be happy that he's coming back because he's probably going to recruit uh, Cromartie back, and they're going to have that Batman-Robin sort of tandem there in the, in, in the secondary. Yeah, I'm not as crazy about Cromartie back because you know, he's getting a little bit older and he's older than Reeves. But you know, getting Revis back still has some good years left. What I like about this deal, you know, the Jets have plenty of, of cap space, is that really they're only on the hook for thirty nine million. And if they get two good years out of Revis, what more do you want? They you know, and they gotta look to build through the draft as well over these next few years. So to me it's a no brainer. Also the idea of bringing some leadership back to the defense, which I think they need. Um, and, and, you know, all of a sudden this defense looks pretty good because it, it originally under Rex, the secondary was great with Revis and Cromartie and, and Leonard, and, and, the, and the front line wasn't strong. Now the front seven is a lot stronger, and now they'll be as good in the secondary. You know, how far can they carry them? How, you know, how much can Chris Ivory give them? He'll be good. He'll be good. Chris Ivory will be good. Uh, hopefully they get a little more from Bilal Powell. But, Mike, i, I got to be honest here, and we, you, we've already talked about this already, but – I, I can't pull myself to believe that all these changes they're making are going to skyrocket this team until I believe they have a good quarterback. Well, and I feel as if Ryan Fitzpatrick is still not the answer. Geno Smith has still proved he's not the answer, and it's a quarterback league. It all starts with the quarterback. It is a quarterback league, but you're improving on an already good defense. You're improving the offense with Marshall, and Fitzpatrick is a – is a complete upgrade from what Geno Smith is. You got to realize I have watched some of the worst football, and I've seen some bad football through the Jets through my years of watching NFL games. Okay, going mm-hmm. back mm-hmm. to Browning Nagel and Kyle Mackey and whoever else you want to throw in there for the New York Jets, and Richard Todd's three five interceptions in the 80, 82 AFC Championship game. I have seen some of the worst football between Mark Sanchez and Geno Smith over the last four years. <laughs> it is unwatchable. And as a football fan, you only get 16 games a year to watch it. You know, even but, if, you, if you're a baseball fan, you know, you could, if, you, if the, when the Mets stunk a few years ago, they had Matt Harvey. Every fifth day, you know he's going to come out there. Years ago, when, when the Angels stunk, you know what? They had Nolan Ryan. At least there was something. There was nothing worse than watching a bad quarterback. And Geno Smith, whether it's his skills or it's his brain or he just doesn't, just doesn't care, has been awful and they've been impossible to watch. But you you went and got you mentioned Mark Sanchez. I mean, you guys let him go, and I understand the butt fumble and I understand everything. But listen, is Ryan Fitzpatrick still yes, an upgrade yes, from Mark Sanchez? Question. I don't, I don't. I disagree. Oh, please. I disagree. He, I don't think there was no progression in Mark Sanchez. His body language is terrible. You saw it with the Eagles towards the last last part of the season. Um, when things he go threw wrong, for 380 yards. Uh, well, one of the first when things couple go games wrong, he was in there. Sanchez, Sanchez gets way, way down. Mark he, my he words. Needs to be a leader. I'm telling you. I right. said Sanchez would be out of the league. Uh, was it the, the, fir- the first year where they didn't make the playoffs under Ryan, and pretty much he was re- you know relegated to a backup quarterback. If it wasn't for Folds getting injured, 
Sanchez wouldn't have spent any time last year. No, he wouldn't have. And and you know he got lucky for that. But he's you got to realize he stepped in out of a backup role and slid right into basically one of the best quarterbacks that week. I mean, I know it was only one week he threw for over 300 yards, but listen, he did. He is a professional he, quarterback, so, you know. Uh, uh, well, look at know. what Michael Vick did when the Jets expected him to step in out and of the backup role. Every Do you remember now, what he did? Every now and then a blind scroll will find a nut. I didn't prepare. That was his words. Juice Jones. I, you know, my point is just this. I, I really wish and I hope that the Jets still have it in their plan to draft a quarterback. And if that's not possible, so be it. Hope with Ryan Fitzpatrick. But at this moment, I cannot figure. Just like you said, you could add Brandon Marshall. You can add whoever you want to that offense. It doesn't mean a thing unless somebody can get them the ball. And you think Ryan Fitzpatrick can? I want to see him prove it to me because last year with the Bills, he was up and down, up and down, and I need to see a more consistent quarterback lead that team out there every every week. Well, I need I need a star. No, you, I need a look, star. Look, every That's receiver, I, I was talking to Curtis Conway um, out in San Francisco in September uh, producing some games, uh, was actually the Eagles and the 49ers, and, and Curtis was just saying, look, look at my numbers. I had no one throwing me the ball throughout most of my career. And he's right. A wide yeah. receiver could go from 60 receptions to 100 receptions based on the quarterback. So what you, what you bring up is a good point. Uh, I think Again, I think Fitzpatrick's going to be a good fit. He had three straight years of 20-plus touchdown uh, passes, and he's had some decent numbers through the years. But look at his starts, 89 starts, 33 and 55. Career-wise, 123 touchdown passes, 101 interceptions. So at least he's on the positive. Yeah. Okay? He's on the positive. They just need a game manager and anything – Anything is better than what I've seen the last four years. I agree with that. You get what you get with Fitzpatrick, but right now, as you said, anything is a step up from Geno Smith. And uh, hopefully everything's a step up from what we are. Mike Demurgis <laughs> and the great Anthony Carlo here on Jets Nation Radio on the New York Sports Machine.